All right, you found it. It's the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. We call it Weather for Weather Geeks, and it's Wednesday evening. It is the 20th day of March. Here, as Severe Weather Awareness Week rolls on in the state of Ohio, you may have heard the tornado sirens being tested in your community as part of the statewide tornado drill this morning at 9.50 a.m., and we've been talking all week about different aspects of severe weather and severe weather preparedness and awareness on this video, on social media, on our newscasts as well. I'm going to talk about a couple of different things this evening. You know, a lot of times in the in advance of a potential severe weather day, we show you these colorful maps. Uh, we say that uh, these are from the Storm Prediction Center, part of the National Weather Service. These are the uh, risk maps, the in their categorized one to five. Um, it's very, very common in eastern Ohio and western PA to be in that kind of green zone, uh, level one risk. Uh, the uh, more Kind of descriptive term is marginal risk and we're in this 30 to 40 times per year on average some years more some years less slight risk is the category that's next highest and we're in that pretty often as well on average about 20 to 25 days per year once you get beyond slight and down into enhanced and especially into moderate that becomes more rarefied error if you will for our part of the country we don't see those kind of risks very often around here and enhanced risk and certainly a moderate risk, much more common from western Ohio back into the Corn Belt, uh, across the Mississippi Valley and down into the southeast. A high risk is something that we almost never see in eastern Ohio and western PA, and only a few times a year does that occur anywhere in the U.S., and it's usually in parts of Dixie Alley, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, places like that, or out across parts of the Plain States as well. Another question I get asked fairly frequently, and I've covered this uh, before on Weather for Weather Geeks, but just a quick reminder in case you didn't see that video. You know, we're asked a lot when we're covering severe weather, especially, you know, in a live streaming setting, what's the deal with the plus signs on the radar when we're showing the lightning overlaying the uh, radar image? And basically, we're just delineating between lightning strikes that have a negative voltage and a positive voltage. The plus signs are positive voltage, of course, and while all lightning is dangerous, positive voltage strikes have a much higher voltage, up to a billion volts. And while they are less common than negative voltage strikes, they are deadlier because of the higher voltage and because they tend to hit the ground and things near the ground more often. All right, anything but, uh, you know, severe weather season today, that's for sure. It was more like a midwinter day. The wind was just nasty this afternoon. Wind chills all day in the 20s and lower 30s. The wind will relax some overnight for tonight. We've also had occasional bursts of light snow and flurries that have pushed through. These are fading away as of this recording at 707. That process will continue over the next few hours. Some wildfires broke out today uh, downwind of the Appalachian Mountains, especially in Virginia. Um, some spot wildfires because of low relative humidity, dry ground, and strong winds. Uh, downwind of the uh, Appalachians from Virginia into parts of Maryland around Washington, D.C., even down into parts of North Carolina. Ugly situation down there earlier on today. All right, we're going to miss out on a pretty decent snow event uh, with the system that brings us rain late Friday and Friday night. It will be a stripe of snow from, oh, Milwaukee up to Green Bay and over towards a lot of the lower peninsula of Michigan, landing right across the Great Lakes into interior parts of New England, including the mountainous areas of Vermont, New Hampshire, and into Maine. For us in the near term, boy, cold start to the day on Thursday. In fact, the next two mornings will probably be our coldest until sometime late next fall or next winter, as I, th I think some local thermometers are going to have no problem getting down into the mid and upper teens tomorrow morning and into Friday morning as well. Otherwise, high pressure gives us pretty quiet weather for a lot of the end of the work week. But clouds will increase late in the day Friday as the snow stays to our north. We will see rain. Let's back this up to Friday evening. We'll start to see some scattered showers, some light rain then for a good chunk of the evening into the overnight. This could end as a light wintry mix or a little bit of snow, but not expecting any problems with any frozen precipitation. And while Saturday will start with clouds, I do think there'll be a decrease in clouds from west to east as we go into Saturday afternoon, and that'll set the stage for a bright and sunny day on Sunday. But you know the drill around here, it's mid-March. It's going to be a roller coaster ride sometimes, temperature-wise. Very chilly despite the sunshine on Thursday, but then we bounce up to 50 on Friday, back down to 40 for a daytime high on Saturday, back up to 48 on Sunday. And then next week, well, I wouldn't say it's a warm week. It will not be as chilly as many of our days this week. I think we'll spend a lot of next week with highs, mostly in the 50s. Are we done with snow at this point, uh, aside from maybe a little wintry mix Friday night and very early Saturday morning? Wouldn't make that call on, on March the 20th. I think the pattern remains kind of a chilly one into the first stages of April 
that may open the door to some late season snow chances. You know, in our part of the country, it can snow, as you know, well into April, and you know, there's been a handful of instances of May snow over the last several years. So we're not going to close the book on snow, but nothing is coming anytime in the foreseeable future in terms of any real impactful winter weather around here. Uh, so stay tuned on that. The weather for the eclipse on April the 8th remains, of course, an open question this far out. It's only March the 20th. Starting next week, about a week from right now, second half of next week, we'll start to make some educated guesses on the general pattern uh, when it comes to clouds and precipitation. We can say this far out that the general idea is that probably the first week to 10 days at least of April are going to be on the cool side. Now, you can have a cool sunny day like we're going to have tomorrow afternoon. It doesn't mean if it's a cool day in early April, it doesn't mean clouds and precipitation. Um, but yeah, too early to talk about clouds and precipitation, but generally not expecting probably a 75 degree day for the eclipse. And, you know, it's early April, so that can happen sometimes, but it doesn't look like it's in the cards this year. I think we'll do a, a full April forecast coming up tomorrow evening, Thursday evening, on Weather for Weather Geeks. In the meantime, thank you for watching tonight. I will see you right back here on Thursday.